what they go do with me now I'm still a talk of the town Don't need assistance, I'm hooking them down We turn the smiles into frowns Gang hop out, then we clearing the crowd Alright, hey guys, we're in a new episode of Talk of the Town. Today we got a special guest, Spike Tarantino. It's good. Spike Tarantino in the building. You know, so, I had to pop out the talk of the show. You talk said say what? I had to pop out to the talk of the town for me. I had to pop out. Yes. Shout out to y'all, y'all doing your thing. You are too. You everywhere. Academics, here, there, <laughs> everywhere. Uh, so, hot fro, so for people that don't know where you from. I'm from the Bronx, South Bronx to be exact. And um, how'd you get your start? Like, how'd you get started? Um, I started when I was younger. I used to record um, all my friends dancing. I had my own dance team. So I was always outside just doing anything and trying to go up every day. <laughs> so, so I'm sure back then, growing up versus now, going up is two different things. Yeah, it changed. It changed. Every different um, genre of music, every different... The styles of clothing, everything changes. It's always going to change. Yeah. Definitely. Even the videos, too, I feel like. For sure. So, um, tell us the backstory. How you got your name, Spike Tarantino? Um, I used to go by a whole other name, which was K-Mac. And then um, I just thought of my two favorite directors, was Spike Lee and Quentin Tarantino. And they both got two different type of personalities. And um, that's the style I was bringing to the, to the camera world, like, Feel me? I got two different type of shooting styles and ways of I could go about situations. So I put the names together, and that's how I came up with it. And like, it's, you kind of have a logo, but you kind of we kind of have a color. Orange mm -hmm. is like your color. Why orange? Yeah, that's my favorite color since I was a little kid. So I just stuck with it. People was like, in the beginning when I made my logo, they like orange. I'm like, yeah, bro, that's my, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so like, who, so was those two directors inspiring you, or was it more or? Yeah, they was inspiring me to um, switch the name, but they didn't inspire me to pick up the camera. That was, that was just, that was just natural. Like that was just natural as a youngin. So what inspired you to grab the camera? The the dance culture. Like when I was younger, Light Feet. It inspired me to record everything we was doing. So I always had a camera since then till now. Would you ever um like do a documentary of like all the old footage you have? Yeah, I, um, I still. It's crazy though that you say that. I got I got footage on a VHS. <laughs> that nobody saw like some some legendary footage, some old school dancers, people that's not probably even living, just yeah. mad footage that I collected when I was younger. I'm definitely gonna do a little documentary on it though. Yeah, yeah put all your footage together and stuff like that. So, do you remember the first music video you you actually shot? Yeah, I, the first music video I probably ever shot was um for like some dude named C Easy from Slaughtery, one of the little T TJ's um, people's. Feel me, but he older than little TJ, but. That was the first video I shot. That was my young boy. He just started rapping, had a camera, and we just we was always linking with each other. He like, yo, bro, I'm trying to rap. You, you got the camera, shoot my video. I'm like, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a funny story. So like, how did so like, so did you keep one do music videos after that, or was people kept asking like, how did they transition? Yeah, nah, today? people people kept asking because. Like, every time I would do a video, it would go viral. Like, when I first did a video, like, for the Light Feet videos that I used to do, most of them would go viral. Like, I did a video with my brother and them dancing. And everybody was like, yo, the way you edited that was OD. So it was like, people used to always give me that compliment, like, yo, your editing is crazy. So that was, like, the goal. I'm like, give me a project, give me something to work with, put it in the computer, I'm going to make magic. And um, how'd you learn how to edit? I taught myself. Yeah, so YouTube for sure. Mm -hmm. I definitely taught myself too. It's nah. crazy. I ain't, I ain't use YouTube. You was just trying stuff. Yeah, I just went to the <laughs> computer. It was no YouTube when I started. When I when I first learned how to edit, it was no YouTube, like to teach you. You feel me? I had to learn that on my own. I had to sit there. So how did you know the programs to buy? You was just asking I, like, around. Like <clears throat> all the like I had older people that was like my mentors. They wasn't even into videos. They was like they had real estate companies. They just was business minded people. And it was like, yo, you should get this, the MacBook. They just told me what to get. I had friends. French Montana, he was one of the first people to tell me what camera to get. So I just followed directions. I'm like, get this, get this, get that. Now I got to learn the other parts. That, that was just hours and hours and hours in the crib studying that. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. That's crazy. So, like, so a lot of artists, you know, put their music on raps and hustles, flotastic and things like that. Um, what are your thoughts on that, being that you're a creator? 
Um, I think it's good. I think it's um, you know, it depends what type of market you're trying to reach. Like as an artist, you could um steal all your fan base and keep it to yourself and build it up in one spot, or you could spread it around a little bit. So I think as artists, y'all should take heed to sometimes putting your stuff in one spot and putting it somewhere else, but always have your own channel. Yeah. yeah. So you are for artists having their own channel. Of course, of course. <laughs> And like you as a creator, do because a lot of, a lot of artists get into like oh like they some people feel like if they shoot it, it has to go on their channel. D yeah, some people. Well, I, I think those people that's like that, they pay, they like they so much of a creator that that's the lane that they want to be in. Because it's like if you paint a picture, like it's your it's your personal work. So some people really be passionate about it. So they like, I want this project for me. So I know a few directors that do that. Um, I think nobody wrong in that situation. Everybody could take the video or pass it out. Yeah. So what what do you feel like makes you stand out as a videographer? Um. Really, I just I'm just me. Like I ain't, I don't. It's no. There's no. I don't have no thing to learn from. I had to learn everything myself. So my format will be used over from somebody else, and then the little bit of stuff that they took from me is gonna be used to the next person. My DNA is just natural. Like everything is me. Just chomping it up, learning stuff. I don't really have no inspiration from a cameraman. I just go right. to myself and whatever I'm creative it mindset, I'm just going with it. It's like paint a picture. You can't you can't really um you can't copy somebody's painting. You just gotta yeah. however you feel. Like my personality is too different for anybody to say they could do what I could do because mm -hmm. I might be moody, I might be happy, I might be sad. Like my moods is the way how I edit. It's mm -hmm. my natural body, my natural self. Everything is natural. I can't fake that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like you ever been in a situation where you you do artists? I know artists be wanting like slight changes and stuff like that. How do you deal with that? Cause I feel like a lot of people don't be do it professionally. So like, what's yeah. your way of going about it? Um, with the artists, they want changes. I mean, you know, you always should at least give them that one change on the house. Is you know, people sometimes have a hard time with like once again the the, the term painting. Like if I paint something, it's like the person's like, yo, I painted it. You mm -hmm. paid me to paint it. Some yeah. people have a hard time with letting that go mm -hmm. to telling a person, I want to add this or take this out. But, you know, you just got to work with the artist. At the end of the day, the vision is more important than anything. You know? mm. No, that is that is very true. So a while back, you posted a list of all the artists you wanted to shoot for. It was G Herbo. Tell us the list one more time. Yeah, that was um in like 2016, 17. I made a list. I was just on my Instagram manifesting stuff. I put G Herbo. It was a little pump. It was uh, 24 hours. It was a few people that was hot at the time that, like, creatively, I'm like, nah, I like what they're doing. I know if we used to do something together, I'd probably body it just because of the sound that they projecting. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, G Herbo was definitely on that list because he definitely put on for Chicago. He's a GOAT. Yeah. So you fulfilled your list and it took from 2016 to now? Yeah. Did you make a new list yet or are you still nah, I didn't. The, I didn't really make the new list yet because... Um, I got other goals that I'm knocking off right now. So, like, the next list will come soon. Like, whenever, whoever I want to work with, mm -hmm. like, anybody could do whatever they want in this game. Like, you just got to manifest it. Like, feel me? Like, my boy just did a song with Kanye West. I grew up with him. Mm -hmm. So, anything is possible. You feel me? You could just talk about it, think about it, and just put yourself in a position, and it's going to happen. So, I don't know who's going to be next or what other big project I'm going to do, mm -hmm. but I know it's going to be natural. It's going to happen with it. Time being, definitely. Yeah. So like, so like some, so like, drill. The working with drill artists can get you know crazy sometimes. Do you ever have? Have you ever ran into the situation where they are like, oh, we don't want to shoot because you shot for them or stuff like that? And how do you deal with that? Um, nah, not me. <laughs> you never been in I that could, situation. I've been everywhere. Like I could go. I don't like when I before camera the, before like shooting for drill artists. I was already shooting for drill artists. Like, right. I was doing We Mobbing DVD. It was the same mm -hmm. concept. It was before it was even people put it on wax. So, I think I don't really, I, I could do any side. Like, I'm cool, I'm mutual. Yeah, and, um, it, well, I don't know how to say it, but has there ever been a time shooting where you didn't feel safe and how'd you deal with that? Um, I, I've, yeah, there's been a time where I probably, I wouldn't say I didn't probably feel safe. Ago, yeah, years, years ago, yeah. Because now I think everybody, like, I feel whether, like everybody mature. Right? Every, yo, everybody know how to deal with what they're doing. Like, we're dealing with a lot of mature people. So, 
you know, people might look from the image of, oh, these kids, this, but these kids yeah. are very mature. Mm -hmm. So most of the time, I'm, I've done dealt with people back then that was older than these kids that was all silly, doing mm -hmm. too much. And the kids mm -hmm. that I deal with now, very, very mature. How do you feel about the pe How do you feel about the way, like I guess, the older people are painting this new generation? Um, I'm not really jacking it at all because they paint it like that. And what about their generation? What about the generation before that? And the generation before that? It you can't put music and you can't use something for like say, oh, drill is the reason for some. It's been going on before we was even born. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like this is the DNA of the culture that the America was built on. Mm -hmm. You know, when people try to put it on drill, it's like, yeah, I see how big it's getting. So it's like, let's cut these kids down so they don't get this bag. That's all I look at it as. Right. And then I they I see that they're trying to make this new law about using the lyrics for the, like, you as a, you know, you shoot videos and things like that. So, like, how do you feel about that? Um, I think this is not fair for the kids, you know what I'm saying? Because if they was going to use that concept, why they didn't been do it? Like, think about it. We grew up on 50 Cent. He had a mm -hmm. song called Many Men. Mm -hmm. He's telling us about his whole life story. He had right. a documentary, you know? So it's, I can't. they can't do that to these kids. I think it's unfair. I feel like they're just trying to figure out ways to, like, I guess, stop this whole drill movement. Yeah. Like, even today, the mayor went on to say, like, he's trying to take drill music off social media. Like, it's getting type crazy right now. I feel like it's only like this in New York City, though. What you think? Yeah, I think it's because um, it's the biggest city in the world. And it's promoted so much on TV, every movie. So people come here. They just want to protect it, you know? So um, I, what advice would you give to artists currently with the state of music right now? And, you know, you're working with artists. Yo, just make music. You don't, like, just focus on building and f focusing on um, fixing your craft and getting the best at it. You don't got to always this. You know, you don't always got to take too many shots. Just try mm -hmm. to, feel me, like practice. Get Practice make perfect. So just, you know what I'm saying, focus on the music more and start falling in love with it. Don't just do it. You know what I'm saying? That when you fall in love with music, you're going to start to treat it a certain way. You can always tell people that's really into it for the, for the long haul. You know what I'm saying? So. That's so true. I like that. So, um, so, of course, you are also trying to make opportunities for artists. I see you got the studio, New Legacy. How did that yeah. come about? Um, my sister, you know, I grew up with her. She just came to me. You know, we both came together and we just um, wanted to open the studio. And, you know, we just came up with the name because, you know, that's how we feel personally. New Legacy, you know, we didn't come from nothing. We came from the mud. So we're trying to build a new legacy for our kids, you know. And then the kids that's out here doing what they're doing for the, with the music or the TikTok, we're just trying to help them build their legacy too, you know. Mm. That's dope. That's dope. So what? So what's the um? I would say the well, you kind of said trying to leave the legacy. I was gonna say what's what's the mission? When people go to New Legacy, what do you expect them to see, feel? Um, I want it to feel like you know it's just a home studio. Like <laughs> I want them to feel like they just vibing. Sometimes I'm gonna try to be in there, you know, helping them with some songs. Cause I've been a, I've been in the studio with all different type of artists, so I just want to, you know, give the knowledge that I got to the next person because you never know what could happen with them. Mm hmm. And do you, like, what else is on your, like, bucket list? Studios officially open. Have anything else on your bucket list? New goals? Um, yeah, the, the, one of the biggest things that I got to do is I have to um, do a documentary on the Bronx. Mm. That's the biggest thing. It, gotta, it has to happen. And it's going to happen. <laughs> I got some people that's hit me up for it and all that that want to do it. And so they're going to bring me to Netflix and stuff. So we're going to make that happen. So. so it's definitely in the works. Yeah. So who, who got to be in that documentary right now? Like, Give me five people from Bronx back then, we Marvin DVD days to now, Man, right that's now. That's a good question. Um, five people that has to like be in it so they can start hitting you. Right for that documentary, I'm, I'm gonna have to have like I'm gonna have to have a few people in there, like different areas. I, to say I'm gonna just say like I'm gonna have to have different like groups of people that separated. Like you know everybody got their own little beef, but I'm gonna need yeah. both sides. I'm gonna need both sides. Yeah. Kick. Hey, the beef got to be squashed for the for the documentary. I need everybody in it because, like, the journey's been crazy and everybody played mm -hmm. a part. You feel me? Whether we lost somebody or that somebody went to jail or somebody became rich or successful, mm -hmm. everybody played a part. You know. So you definitely will be reaching out to all sides. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. That's good to know. Give everybody a fair shot. Mm -hmm. Um, anything else though? Documentary, new space. Any, uh, that's pretty much it. Like the first beginning of the year, I just be in the zone. Mm -hmm. Figuring in and seeing what direction I'm going. So 
it's not even the New Year's yet for me. My New Year's don't start till the sun come. That's when it's the New Year's. <laughs> That's cool. So how do you keep motivated? How do you keep going? Um, it's in, it's within. You know, you just gotta like sometimes you just gotta look at the world and for what it is and find motivation in that because you could work every day and sometimes you just not feeling it. Some days you are. Mm -hmm. Some days you super motivated, but you gotta have the balance because like. And you got to be humble because, like, any opportunity, just treat it like it's nothing. That's how you stay in this game long. Like, you could have your biggest moment. Treat it like it's nothing. Just keep mm. working. You know what, I mean? mm. what would you say is your biggest moment so far? Um, Probably, you know, getting some budgets. That was one of my directive goals, getting budgets to work mm. with budgets, just working with production teams, working with a, with a group of people, stuff like that. So that was, my, that was my biggest, one of my biggest goals that I knocked off. Oh, and then opening the studio, but with the director. Too. Definitely. Do you feel like you did anything differently in 2021? You know, you got you won director of the year this year with Talk of the Town. So, was there anything you feel like you did differently that you didn't do back then, or you just felt like timing? Um, I I I think what I did was I just you know focused on one goal and I just said I'm just dealing with this mission and this plan, sticking to it, and that's it. Because you know, other years I'll be. I would be doing other things and, you know, I'd be working with so much different people. Huh. I just kind of got on my, like, Cole Bennett vibes and just <laughs> toned it down a little bit. Yeah, you fuck, you fuck with Cole Bennett. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he definitely be doing a lot. God he got a Cole. team of people. Do you want to work on a team of videographers? Yeah, of course. I, um, shout out to one of the crews that I work with. Um, They was amazing on the set. Feel me? They made me feel like family. It was like family. It was like, it was a good thing. Like, you know, as a director, that's the goal. You know, you want to be on set. You want to be with your peers. You want to mm -hmm. learn more. It's not always about the one man show. Definitely. And you plan treatments for your videos, or you kind of let the artists be creative. Yeah. Um. Yeah. For the for the ones we did with the, we usually try to plan treatments, and then also you got to make sure you cater to the artists because some artists ain't doing everything. <laughs> Have you ever brought to an artist a crazy idea? And they was like, nah. Yeah, all the time, all the time, <laughs> especially with when the music shifted to drill. Like a lot of artists was like, I'm not doing that. Like it was the like what was, acting stuff, certain acting stuff, certain funny stuff, certain skits. Like they just they you know some people be in the box until it's like all right now I gotta go there. Like mm -hmm. sometimes they just be in the box. So eventually it does get to the yeah, acting and acting and stuff like that. That's, that's really good. So five years from now, Spike Santino, where do you see where you see it right? Five years from now, um, probably like five five studios. Recording studios? Five recording studios, one New in New York, York one in Atlanta, one in Houston, um, one in Jersey. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And um, one of the biggest production companies. And I'm going to have my 100 million views. So you want 100 million views? That's the goal? That's it. That's cool. So, um, so what advice would you give an upcoming videographer right now with all the heavy competition and so many videographers right now? What advice would you give them? First thing, I ain't gonna lie, just take a step back and just think about life for a second and then focus on yourself, figure yourself out, meditate a little bit, take the time to yourself and then go back at it. Because sometimes you might be out there and there's a lot of competition mm -hmm. and you might find yourself trying to compete with them. You're right. never supposed to be in competition with nobody. Your competition is who you was last year and the year before that. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's what's, up. That's what's up. So tell the people where to find you. How could they hit you? How could they get in tune with Spike? Um, you can find me on Instagram at Spike Tarantino. Uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Facebook and all other stuff. I really try not to use it. I got a TikTok. I only made it for one reason to see what was going on on there, and it was. <laughs> and that's it. But yeah, just this Instagram. I try to stay off of social media because, of course, you got to focus on who you are before you see what everybody else is doing. Yeah, but but you still dropping on your YouTube channel. Um, sort of, kind of. I'm about to, sh I'm about to, when I finish getting the studio set up and hire everything I want, I'm going to start doing, like, a lot of stuff, dropping on my own channel, mm. you know, giving more content. I haven't really been focused on the content because I've been focusing on studio. the studio and then yeah. also just trying to, you know, hone into what I wanted to do for this one last year that passed. So I set to the goal and I got it done now. You know, I got to do one thing at a time. So studio now, build it up, then just keep going crazy. So you have a team of people with yeah. your um business stuff? Yeah. yeah. Legacy, um, follow my lead. Yeah. That's my sister's um, company. Okay, cool. So definitely. All right, y'all, and that's good.